Good evening. If you would, please bow your heads for a moment of silent prayer. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Murfreesboro City Council, April 1st, 2010. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody that today, I believe, is Census Day, and everyone is please asked to refer return their census forms uh, in the envelope that's provided so we can get an accurate count, which will certainly aid us in making sure our city is represented in the state legislature and also that federal funds that are determined by uh, population, uh, that we get an adequate uh, count here so that we are uh, uh, duly rewarded, I s suppose, for all the residents we have. It certainly helps us keep our tax rate uh, where it is and uh, certainly adds to our ability to be represented in our state legislature and in Congress. So I hope everyone has had an opportunity to fill that out. It's really very simple. It's, it's got several pages to it, but uh, it's very simple to do. So if you will, please fill out those census uh, forms. They are very important. It is a patriotic duty, and I hope everyone has had an opportunity to do that. Uh, council members, uh, this upcoming Saturday we'll be having a memorial uh, which will be a reminder of the devastation of the tornado uh, that came uh, on April the 10th. And it'll be out at the Greenway, and you can get more information on that at the city's website, and I'm sure it will be covered in our local media. But I did want to uh, make everyone mindful of that uh, commemoration of our uh, one-year anniversary of the Good Friday tornado uh, last year. Council members, you have before you now your consent agenda. If you've had an opportunity to review it, are there any questions regarding the items listed on your consent agenda? Mayor, if there are no questions, I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. All right. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. You also have before you the minutes of a special meeting held on March the 4th, 2010. If you've had an opportunity to review those minutes, are there any corrections? Move for approval. All right, you have a second. motion and a second to approve the minutes of the March 4th meeting as presented. If you'll call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time we'll consider for passage on second reading an ordinance to rezone an area located along Crestland Avenue and Eaton Drive. Move for appro approval. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bradshaw. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This time we'll consider for passage on second reading, again, an ordinance to amend Chapter 33, Osborne Lane Sanitary Sewer Assessment District, Section 33-208. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bradshaw. Aye. Mr. Edwards. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. At this time, we'll consider as information only a recommendation of the Chief of Police with regards to off-duty Murfreesboro police officers and the use of department vehicles for approved outside or secondary employment. Chief Christman, welcome. <coughs> Mayor, Council Members, good evening. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. I have provided uh, prior to the meeting some information for you for reference. I will refer to that information as we go through this information uh, presentation. But I do not plan to read that letter in its entirety because it's fairly detailed. I will tell you that, uh, or remind you, I guess, that for some time now, 
your city manager, your city attorney, your risk manager, uh, and I have worked to consider the possibilities for uh, expanding our outside employment policy to include the use of police vehicles in approved outside employment situations. This is not anything new uh, for the city of Murfreesboro or for most law enforcement agencies. In fact, uh, almost every law enforcement agency that I'm aware of has some policy that allows for approved outside employment. I was uh, taking a little bit of a tally earlier uh, with staff, and I, I was able to determine that during 2009, we had 105 jobs that were requested and approved uh, for outside employment situations involving police officers, and there were 144 officers that worked those 105 jobs. Uh, so far in 2010, we have 26 jobs that have been approved for outside employment that involve about 59 officers. The most recent example of that, I think we have 17 officers who have been approved to work the World Outreach uh, Easter services at MTSU. Obviously, that's a big event every year, and they employ a lot of outside employment uh, police officers to assist with traffic and crowd control and those kinds of things. Um, we've been doing that for some time. A number of our other colleagues, including Metro Nashville, uh, Rutherford County, Smyrna, and Laverne, have for some time allowed their police officers to use department vehicles in connection with outside employment. For a number of reasons heretofore, we have not uh, approved a policy that allowed that because of some of the, the risk management issues that were connected to that as well as other uh, considerations as well. We have uh, come back to that now and, and uh, revised that policy and we've provided a copy of that for you tonight. In addition to the copy of the general order that's been revised, you also have two documents one is entitled Application for Permission for Off-Duty Employment, uh, and another uh, document that's titled in Agreement for Employment of Off-Duty Officer. Uh, I'm satisfied that you, you've had some time to look at those before the meeting tonight, but if just a quick glance of those and you'll see that they're, very, uh, they're fairly specific as to the information that has to be provided if you're interested in employing an officer off-duty and they are subject to a, a rigorous review. Uh, approved off-duty employment has to meet certain policy guidelines. You notice that that general order, I think, is 10 pages. It's very detailed. Certain types of, of outside employment are prohibited on their face because they're not consistent with the mission of our department. In addition to the compliance with policy, <laughs> that must occur before any outside employment is approved, you'll notice that there's a fairly uh, lengthy approval process. The uh, shift supervisor has to approve it, someone from our operations division has to approve it, and the deputy chief and I have to approve each and every one. So uh, it, we are aware of where these assignments are being made, what type of work is being done, the hours that are involved and, and the uh, reasons for which someone has requested outside employment. Now where that has become so, uh, difficult in recent years is that we are increasingly, increasingly getting more and more requests for the use of vehicles in connection with outside employment. And I want to include some of this text out of the letter that I provided for you for your benefit as well as for any of the audience that may be uh, watching tonight's broadcast, so bear with me. As I said, increasingly in recent years we've received requests for officers to work off-duty traffic control for events that involve directing traffic in and out of locations that were often heavily congested. These assignments, especially if performed in darkness, present a dangerous situation for the officers involved as well as the pedestrians and motorists. Examples of such requests could include a business grand opening, an open house event, and in recent years several businesses have ho hosted open house fair type, spring fair uh, events where uh, customers have had to cross traffic or you've had congested uh, traffic adjacent to pedestrian movements along four lane divided highways. In those situations, uh, 
the contractors have, have sought to employ off-duty officers and vehicles to help slow that traffic and calm the traffic around those events. Another good example that recently we saw when they were widening the bridges on Southeast Broad Street was uh, the need for traffic control during hours of construction to slow and redirect traffic around those construction areas. And uh, if you were out after dark when that, that construction was going on, you probably saw a police vehicle setting at either end of that construction zone. The benefits of allowing officers to use vehicles in outside employment situations are plentiful. Uh, the most obvious is that in this situation, officers are able to supplement their incomes by working these extra jobs. That helps to support their families uh, through approved outside employment. And again, these all must meet rigorous standards. Individuals and business owners can employ off-duty officers to provide safety and security for their special event under certain conditions. That increases safety, security, and in many cases, <coughs> traffic movements for pedestrians and motorists in the area of the event. This is important, I think. If you are able to allow officers to conduct these activities off-duty, requests for taxpayer-funded deployments of police re resources are reduced. There's probably not a month out of the year that goes by that somebody doesn't call my office and ask for us to staff an event of some sort that really is out of the realm of public service or government service. It's a private, privately funded kind of an event. And being able to allow officers to do off-duty work in those situations reduces taxpayer deploy deployments of police resources and also allows those private citizens to have access to those security uh, resources as they need. This will also, uh, I think, make a big difference for our police officers. They are in a situation now where uh, Rutherford County Sheriff's deputies, Smyrna and Laverne police officers are able to take advantage of off-duty work opportunities inside the city of Murfreesboro. And in many situations, our employees are unable to compete with those opportunities because they don't have the availability of a vehicle, particularly for these traffic control duties. So that will level that playing field. The other thing that I think is important to note here is that <coughs> If you have extra cars and extra uniformed officers who are deployed even in an off-duty secondary work assignment situation, that's another marked vehicle. It's another uniformed police officer who may be being paid by an outside contractor or secondary employer, but to the citizenry, they see another car, they see another uniformed police officer, and they may be doing specific traffic control or other security duties, but if there's a, a violation of the law that occurs in their presence, they're able to respond to that immediately, um, change, if you will, from a private security kind of a situation or, or an outside employment situation to a color of law, law enforcement uh, responsibility as a Murfreesboro police officer. I think the public benefits from that extra uh, uh, availability of resources. I think certainly the extra visibility of the police vehicles and the officers benefits our public as a whole. There are uh, a couple of things I think that are, are important if we're going to talk about benefits. There are some risks. Certainly um, there could be some risk of damage or wear and tear to the vehicle if it was deployed, for instance, in a traffic control situation in a congested four-lane roadway. It's the same risk as we have every day when we have a police vehicle deployed anywhere working traffic around a crash or whatever the case might be. And I think we go back to the main thing there, and that's the safety and security of the public at large around this special event. Uh, so that risk, I think, is fairly similar. Uh, there will be some fuel consumption issues. If you have a vehicle, for instance, that may be parked in a highway construction zone for eight hours with the lights flashing, but there will be a cost that is paid by this outside contractor to help offset the cost of that vehicle for an eight-hour shift, and uh, we feel reasonably comfortable that that will help offset the fuel consumption use. Uh, that's what the Sheriff's Office does now, and actually their money goes back into their gas fund. Ours will go back into the general fund to, to help offset those costs as well. I know that uh, uh, there may be questions about uh, this use and, and whether or not uh, it's a reasonable thing. I believe if uh, change in this policy
provides an opportunity for us to provide better service to our citizens, to provide an opportunity for our employees to supplement income providing work that our citizens and business owners are requesting them to do, and at the same time, uh, increase visibility and increase safety and security in our city. So um, those are the reasons why we have put this policy change in effect, and uh, I hope that uh, um, that will answer most of the questions that you have. As you look at the policy, if you're interested in the, where the changes occur, they begin on page four in the general order under section three, subsection E, and they are largely contained in items two through nine. And those changes are listed on pages uh, four, five, and six. And all of those things have to do with the use of vehicles and how that must be requested, reviewed, approved, and compensated for. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I'll be glad to answer any questions that you or the members of council have. Just a couple of questions. The, uh, the fees will be paid in advance based on the request from the business owner or the individual applying. Is that correct? When there is an application filed, Mayor, we will tell them what that fee is and tell them that it's payable. Um, I would expect, I don't, I don't necessarily expect that it will be paid in advance, but it should be paid contemporaneous with when the work is done. And uh, I, I think you may have seen in the letter, certainly if we don't receive payment from those folks, then we'll not be doing any more work for them. I certainly don't want to put our officers in the collection business. No, sir. No, sir. They will not be. That part of this process would be done by the city. And the payments, if you will, in fact, on the form, I think it says payments for services rendered for hours of work will be paid directly to the officers, and payments for the use of the vehicle are paid directly to the city. I think there ought to be some upfront minimum charge then, or $50 with the, you know, to go toward it or something anyway, so we have some way to control that. Um, the second thing is I understand the risk. Uh, problems, I think, and, and this, uh, I think, led the previous city manager not to be uh, interested in providing this particular uh, use of our vehicles. So I think uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, Mr. Lyons is making his own decisions and working with our police officers and police department to, uh, to at least uh, enhance their ability to uh, provide service to our residents, to our uh, citizens, and, and am I s uh, correct in that the vehicles can only be used inside the city limits or will they be uh, available outside the city limits? No, sir, only inside the city limits and only in those situations where the use of a vehicle is required for the safe conduct of the job, okay. which largely will either be traffic control or if you have a crime prevention type security job, uh, where the, the, the visibility of the vehicle would be a deterrent, then I could see that it would be approved for something like that. All right. Other questions from the council? Mr. Gilley? Mayor, I just want to comment that uh, the Risk Management Committee has looked at this in a great dis level of discussion and detail over the last few years, actually, and uh, over the last uh, few times that we have met. I think we've tried to look at this from every potential <laughs> angle that we could. And uh, I can tell you as chair of that committee, we feel very comfortable uh, with what uh, the chief is recommending. And I, th I think that we all, the consensus that we came to was that the benefit both to the officer and the public at large for the ability of having that police, additional pr police presence uh, is invaluable. We ask our officers, officers to, to stand for the premise that they're always on duty, so to speak, and, and this is us backing that up, I think. Thank you, sir. Mr. McFarland. I, I just have a couple of questions, or uh, mainly to reconfirm that you approve every application that comes through and where that these officers are going to be working. Yes, sir. Every one. So th th I think that's a plus for us. Um, also, you know, the, my main issue is taxpayer dollars, that we're using taxpayer dollars. Um, 
unwisely that we've got something else that you know we're needing it needing it for. But mm -hmm. the one thing that you look at, where say we would need a traffic control, something that comes up to me is on Northwest Broad where we or Northeast Broad where we have um, events and we have to have people who are covering traffic. So we end up taking a police officer off of the street where they could be used somewhere else to direct traffic. So these individuals w could hire the police officers to do that. So we, we can use our resources more valuably. Exactly. But the people who hire our police officers are, like you said, going to have to pay a fee for the, for the use of that car. That's correct. And we have used off-duty for years. We've allowed police officers to work off-duty, just not use their cars. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. As I said earlier, uh, 105 jobs involving 144 officers in 2009. So far in 2010, 26 officers or 59 officers working 26 jobs so far this year. We're not going to allow police. I mean, we're, we're deploying these cars or the police officers are using those. We're not going to allow them to patrol in those cars. We're really just talking about going to a job, parking the car for traffic enforcement. But will they be, you know, driving around in these cars? Not, not to any degree, and I'll say that. If you remember, Mr. McFarland, I think this uh, preceded your term on the council, but we actually had a standing agreement at one point with Spring Valley and Rolling Acres where we actually leased them a car, mm -hmm. so to speak. An officer would work off duty over there, and, and they would pay the officer for the duty time, and mm -hmm. we had an agreement in place where they could take a police vehicle over there and use it during that process. Now. That involves some limited, perhaps, use of the vehicle in that complex, but obviously that was a very limited scope. And part of what uh, is important about the use of the vehicle in that situation is it's one thing to have an officer on foot over in any particular area where you may be, uh, someone may want to pay for some intensified <coughs> police presence. It's another thing to put a marked police vehicle there. It's just much more visible and serves as a greater deterrent. So they could be used in a situation like that. But for a routine patrol kind of a situation, no, sir, I don't envision that at all. And, and I guess my last statement is that the way I look at this, you know, we're, we're able to put more police officers on the street in certain areas that we're not taking away from patrolling our neighborhoods, and it doesn't cost taxpayers money, and someone else pays for it. That's exactly right. So like at MTSU, when we let out a ball game on Thursday night, you know, it's not uncommon to see other jurisdictions, police officers working traffic control in Murfreesboro City Limits. Yes, sir, that's with, correct. With their cars. With, right? their, with their cars. Yes, sir, that's correct. You know, we're not going to allow our police officers to go outside of our jurisdiction, but at the same time, I always get people who ask me questions to say, why are those police officers in our city patrolling our They don't understand that. So I think that is something that's a consideration. Uh, yes, sir, it is. Mayor. Mr. Young. One comment. I, I'm pleased with the fact that we do review our policies periodically and that we do make adjustments. I think that says <laughs> something good for the city and the city manager and that we do look at policies and, and as they need adjustments, we, we make adjustments. So I think that, that says uh, that we are looking forward and looking to improve our, our policies. And this is a good example of it. Vice Mayor, do you have some well, I just want to make a comment. There's some, some great questions, and I, I think we've all uh, got some great answers. And I think this is a win-win for, as Mr. McFarland mentioned, for our employees and for our citizens. And, and I just want to say I appreciate the leadership that Chief Christman, Rob Lyons, and Mr. Gilly, your uh, risk management committee has given to, to get this to this point. I think uh, this just levels the playing field with all the other uh, municipalities in, in Rutherford County allowing us to be on the same uh, level with them and offer the same opportunities for our employees. So I think it's a win-win. Thank you. Sir. I appreciate it. Anything else from the council? I would just echo the sentiments of the rest of the council, Mayor. Uh, it's apparent to me that we are going to increase efficiencies. We're also going to raise the level of public safety and alongside of uh, tax uh, Taxing, those are the things that to me are important. So you've done a yeoman's job with this piece of work. Thank you, sir. 
Chief Christmas, thank you for bringing this uh, policy update to us. We appreciate the time and the attention. If we have other questions about it, I'm sure we can uh, meet with you later. And uh, Mr. Lyons and Ms. McGann, I know you and probably a number of other people have had uh, things to do uh, concerning this issue and bringing it uh, to fruition. So I appreciate all of you working together. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Thank you. This time we'll consider for adoption a resolution requesting unclaimed balance of accounts remitted to state treasurer under the Unclaimed Property Act. Mayor, I'll Ms. take Wright, this one. Welcome. Um, you have, you have the, the purse of unclaimed property. Is I do. Correct? Good. I do. So I, have a, I have an interest in that. <laughs> uh, every year we turn over checks that we've been able to uh, We've, we've tried, been unable to find the owners of the checks. We were required to turn that over to the state as unclaimed property. As a government, we're allowed to reclaim those funds and hold them for future claims here, and, and we get to make that request once a year. And this is the request for the year ending 2008, which is $171.22. <laughs> if a little bit helps. <laughs> we, we have... Uh, really worked all year every year to try to keep that number small and try to find the people who should have the money throughout the year but there's always a few we can't find so we're going to make this with your request I mean, with, with your approval we're going to request this money back any questions from Ms. Wright on this resolution no questions may I move for adoption of the, res of the resolution second Thank you. You have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher? Aye. Mr. Edwards? Aye. Mr. Gilly? Aye. Mr. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. Are there any beer permit applications tonight? Thank you. There are none. You have before you a list of the statements proposed to be paid. There are no questions on the list of statements to be considered for payment. Is there a motion that we pay the bills? So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher? Aye. Mr. Edwards? Aye. Mr. Gilly? Aye. Mr. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. Uh, is there other business from the staff or council to come before the council at this time? Chief, welcome back. Mr. Mayor, I placed a, uh, an item on your desks tonight that's entitled the Police Fire Dispatcher Training Funds. <laughs> from the Rutherford County Emergency Communications District. <coughs> Briefly, Mayor, uh, what I'm requesting tonight is for a budget amendment that would create a line item in our budget. Uh, however, Ms. Wright wants to entitle it something to the extent of police fire communications training and to fund that with a revenue source that will come from the Rutherford County Emergency Communications District. In the material that's included in that package this evening, you have uh, a letter from Director Steve Smith of the Rutherford County Emergency Communications District as well as a media release from the State Department of Commerce and Insurance that talks about the second annual refund, if you will, of some training dollars back through the 911 districts to the local public safety answering points. And uh, that, that's kind of a, compu uh, a complicated formula, but briefly where that money is coming from is from uh, the Tennessee Emergency Communication Board's efforts to end subsidies that have been paid to wireless carriers in recent years for the build-out of infrastructure in connection with wireless 911. Uh, that particularly has to do with the proliferation, obviously, of cell phone devices and the ability of our 911 infrastructure to track those calls that come from wireless phones uh, using longitude latitude coordinates and those kinds of things. Uh, the Emergency Communication Board at the state level has been able to free up some of that money to be redirected to the local 911 boards and in turn back to the public safety answering points. The distribution formula that 911 is using is $4,000 for each public safety answering point in our communication center. We have eight answering points. Eight times four is $32,000. So they have refunded or returned, if you will, $32,000 back to Murfreesboro 
that is to be used for continuing the training and education of our public safety dispatchers. I will tell you, and uh, uh, I feel sure that you all are, are very well aware, uh, public safety dispatching and telecommunications is a, a critical part of the mission that we perform daily. It involves not only uh, your police and fire departments, but also our emergency medical service provision within Rutherford County and the city of Murfreesboro. And we have worked diligently, and the mayor and council have supported, not only with your words and your deeds, but also with our tax dollars, trying to make our communication center the finest anywhere, and it is one of the finest anywhere. This extra funding that's being redirected from State 911 will further the training and education for our public safety dispatchers. Right now in Tennessee, there is not a requirement for an annualized in-service training program for public safety dispatchers in the same way that there is for police officers and firefighters. We hope in some time to be able to begin a program like that and to supplement that with some career development training uh, for our public safety dispatchers, and this funding stream will help us to do that. It is anticipated that this will be recurring money, and so this would provide some annualized training for your public safety dispatchers that would not have to come directly from the taxpayers of Murfreesboro, and uh, we believe that's a win-win and, and a good way to earmark these dollars so that they can be used annually in pursuit of that effort. Um, with that, uh, Mayor, I'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have. I would say one thing here. We are uh, very fortunate to have Director Steve Smith from our local 911 board. He's our executive director there. He is a member of that committee. Uh, and along with the other members of that statewide 911 committee, they watch very closely those dollars and how they're spent. And I'm, I'm very thankful to him for his leadership in returning these dollars for local use. Be glad right. to answer any questions. Any questions for Chief uh, on this request for a new budget line item and an attachment of this revenue from that source? Any questions? If there are none, is there a motion that we accept this recommendation? So moved. Second. All right, you have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher? Aye. Mr. Edwards? Aye. Mr. Gelly? Aye. Mr. McFarland? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. Any other business? Oh, excuse me, Chief. No, sir. No, thank you very much. Yes. Any other business? Hey, yes, sir. Just uh, one, one quick announcement, uh, Mayor. As you all know, uh, Sue Mahon uh, uh, retired uh, yesterday. Uh, many of you were at her uh, reception, and uh, Sue did a tremendous job for the city, and that led us to a point where we needed to replace uh, Ms. Mahon. Uh, so we did a search. Uh, the city received over 50 uh, applications, and I'm uh, honored and pleased to uh, report to you that Assistant Director Glenn Godwin is now the new uh, Human Resources Director. Uh, we're going to retitle that department uh, in conjunction with this change and, and kind of modernize the, the name of that department, so it will be the Human Resources Department. But Glenn has uh, distinguished himself in his six months with the city. He is a former HR director of the private sector. Uh, has done a fantastic job and in the interview process stood out as, as the top candidate. So he stood the test of an open competition. Uh, we're pleased to bring Glenn on board. I think he's going to build upon the work that was done by Sherry Carpenter and, and Ms. Mahon. And uh, we're excited about what Glenn brings to the table. So I want to make that announcement to you uh, today and, and welcome Glenn uh, to his new position. Yep. Congratulations, Glenn. And I know after you break Mr. Lyons in, he'll be even happier that you've done exactly <laughs> what you're going to do. <laughs> April <Thank you>. Fool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any comments or regarding Mr. Godwin's acceptance of this new position? Very good. We're very pleased and certainly we have a, a line of uh, Great folks who have provided leadership in our personnel policies, and we are certainly looking forward to you, and it's quite a recommendation and an accomplishment in, that in the short period of time that you've been here that you've done so well to be elevated right away. So we're very pleased and, and proud and hope to see a lot of you, and I know you'll take good care of our employees and all of the folks who are on the front line as our city employees.
He Thank has, you. He has to smile like Ms. Mayan does. He has to smile like Ms. Mayan all the time. I'm, I'm not sure that was in the job description. <laughs> Ms. Mayan certainly did that. Other business from the staff or the city council? Anything else? If there's nothing else, you're adjourned. Thank you.